Hi there. Before we get started on our last chapter of classifying animals, animal classification, I wanted to talk about some of the words that we're going to see in this chapter. This first one is, you can either say zoologist or zoologist. I'm going to say zoologist because um, we know that two O's together would make that OO sound, but the ologist part is meaning someone who studies something. So I'm writing zoologist. Ologist. That ologist is a person who studies something. Zo is having to do with animals, so a zoologist is a scientist who studies animals and their characteristics. So now that you guys have so much knowledge about different animals and their types of classification, you could be a junior zoologist in your own backyard or neighborhood. Remember, characteristics are the different things that we can describe about something. And if you have a team of zoologists, more than one, you would add an S at the end to make it plural. And if you want to pause and come up with a little drawing, a sketch to help you remember what a zoologist is. You can do that as well. The next word we need to add to our glossary is observe. O, B, S, E, R, V, E. Observe. O is a vowel. B is a consonant. S is a consonant. E is a consonant, or is a vowel controlled by consonant R. And then V is a consonant and E at the end is a vowel. It will not make a sound. So observe, observe has two vowel sounds. That O and that E make a sound. Observe means to watch closely and carefully. So I ask you to observe the photographs as we are reading. You will be observing them as we go in the present tense. That ing suffix shows that it's happening now, observing. The next word is a multiple meaning word. You might see in a musical instrument called an organ. A lot of times they're in churches, but this type of organ is an important body part that performs a specific function. So your largest organ is actually your skin. It's an important body part that performs a specific function. Your skin's function is to keep everything, all your other organs inside your body. Performs a specific function. And if you are talking about more than one organ, you would add an S on the end to make it plural and it would become organs. The next word we are going to talk about is actually a name. So we need a capital A at the beginning to show that it's a proper noun. Names are proper nouns. And this name is Aristotle. You may have heard of this before, you may not. This may be new to you. So that first A is controlled by the R. The I is a short I sound. Arist, ot, short O. And then L-E suffix at the end says all. Aristotle was a Greek man who lived long ago. and was one of the first people to write about classifying animals. So people all over the world have probably been observing animals throughout history, but Aristotle was one of the first people to write this down so that we still know about it today. And last, you may recognize this word because I know that you, as IB scholars, all strive to be knowledgeable. Knowledge, I see at the beginning, it's the word know, K 
A-N-O-W, knowledge is just another synonym for information. So if you are knowledgeable, you have lots of information about the topic that you're knowledgeable about. All right, with that, that was only one, two, three, four, five new words. Those are the last words we'll be adding to our glossary for this text. Um, you can hold on to it to uh, use if we have another text that maybe you want to refer back to if you recognize a concept that you've learned about before but can't quite remember. Um, that's, that's up to you. We're ready to start reading chapter nine, Scientists Who Classify Animals. This will be our last chapter in this text. So over here, there's a photograph. See, there's a large turtle or tortoise, and this zoologist is studying a turtle. Rattenborough here once again. You have been learning about how scientists study the characteristics of living things. They classify all living things into one of five large groups called kingdoms. You have been learning a lot about how animals are sorted into more specific groups within the animal kingdom. The scientists who study animals and their characteristics are called zoologists. Zoologists observe animals to see the ways they are the same and the ways they are different. For example, zoologists discovered that some animals are warm-blooded and some are cold-blooded. So the zoologists, like this man right here, study and observe animals and then divide them into different groups to find ways they are the same and ways that they are different through their characteristics. Zoologists also classify animals by whether or not they have a backbone. Animals with a backbone and a spinal cord are called vertebrates. Animals that do not have a backbone are called invertebrates. We learned that there are five groups of vertebrates, fish, birds, amphibians, reptiles, and mammals. The largest group of vertebrates is fish. Zoologists also study other characteristics of animals. They study animal body parts and how they are alike or different. All animals need to breathe oxygen, but they have different organs that help them breathe. Fish and young amphibians have gills that help them get oxygen out of the water Mammals, reptiles, and adult amphibians get oxygen from the air using lungs. Zoologists also study how different animal babies are born and cared for. Do you remember which group of mothers, animal mothers, feed their babies milk from their own bodies? And it asks us that same question over here in the caption. I remember that a chimpanzee is a mammal and they feed their babies milk. Everything we have learned about animals was discovered by scientists. There have been many scientists who have been interested in animals since long, long ago. A Greek man named Aristotle first classified animals over 2,000 years ago. He wrote a book called A History of Animals. A scientist, as scientists have discovered and learned more about animals, the classification system has changed. There is still much to learn about animals. After all, there are thousands of new animals yet to be discovered and classified. And over in the photograph, we see a statue of Aristotle. So since he was one of the first scientists to write down what he was observing about animals, um, he's, he's considered one of the first scientists and they built a statue to honor him. Um, but when he was discovering animals, since he was one of the first people to make hypotheses, hypotheses about um, the different things that animals do, a lot of the things that he thought were wrong. We actually disproved those ideas as we went through time. So as you are growing up and learning more about animals, you may also have the opportunity to become a zoologist if you study science in college and you could learn more about animals and prove some other theories. Every single day, scientists learn new facts about animals. Scientists even find new animals they didn't know existed. There is no end to new knowledge if you study living things. Today, there are about one million scientists around the world who are studying and classifying animals, even as you read this. Every one of them spends the day observing, experimenting, and finding new information. This adds to our knowledge about the world we live in. If you want to be a zoologist when you grow up, there's plenty to study. 
you never know when someone is going to learn something that changes the way we think about the world. Who knows? Maybe you will be the first to find feathered fish or a flying snail. It may sound silly now, but a hundred years ago, nobody knew what whale, that whales communicated with each other. What will you discover? And over here in the caption, it says, what kind of animals would you like to observe if you were a zoologist? It's just a photograph of a third grader somewhere. And our assignment for today is to add to this map. It says, add all the things that zoologists do to this map. One thing has been added for you. So here's zoologist is going to be the middle. They've added for you that they observe animals. I want you to add more boxes. So you can draw this on your paper and then add another line with another box to tell me another thing that zoologists do. All right, that's it for now. Um, I will have some other texts that we are working through um, throughout the week. So you can be on the lookout if you finish all of these assignments or some other assignments for you to challenge yourself with as well. Thank you guys for working so hard and I will see you next time.